Hello everyone and welcome to session three of the Global Black Feminist Reader Circle. My name is Randy Henderson and I am one of the Black Feminist Reader Circle members of this online group. This session runs from January 20th until June 2nd and includes two week long breaks. Our democratically selected reading material is Harriet A. Washington's book, Medical Apartheid, The Dark History of Medical Experimentation on Black Americans from Colonial Times to the Present. Our book group meets each Tuesday evening from 6.30 to 8 on the Google Plus Hangouts on Air platform. You may find the, Glo the Global Black Feminist Reader Circle on Google Plus, YouTube, and Facebook. And always feel free to join us in reading our story together. Hello everyone and welcome to the Global Black Feminist Reading Circle. My name is Michelle Odom. I'm one of the co-hosts of the circle and I'm located in Brooklyn, New York. I invite you to learn more about the Global Black Feminist Reading Circle at our main page on Google Plus or on our Facebook group page. Uh, or by visiting YouTube where all of our videos are housed and there are a lot of them. And this session runs through June 16th, so we are coming on down the road. This session we are reading Harriet A. Washington's Medical Apartheid. The Dark History of Medical Experimentation on Black Americans from Colonial Times to the Present. And tonight we are on Chapter 14, The Machine Age, African American Martyrs to Surgical Technology. And actually, Randy Henderson is going to be moderating tonight, but she won't be here until about 7. Tell, yes. us, who you, tell us who you are. Uh, my name is uh, Joel. I'm calling from, um, hailing you from Charleston, South Carolina. Yes, the infamous North Charleston, South Carolina. <laughs> Thank you. And Edwina? Um, my name is Edwina, and I'm telling you from um, Utah, the infamous red state of uh the Mormons and the Navajo Indians. <laughs> and you're looking wow. rather cute tonight. And Georgette? I'm Georgette Moses, and I'm participating from Columbia, South Carolina. Okay, and Kim? Hi, I'm Kim, and I'm calling from New York. And I'm Walker, and I'm um, joining you from Connecticut. Welcome. Okay. Hi, my name is Randy. I'm supposed to be moderating tonight, <laughs> but I hope that everybody are, um, is enjoying the question so far. But my name is Randy, and I'm watching from Atlanta. Chapter 14: The Machine Age, African American Martyrs to Surgical Technology tells the story of medical experimentation with artificial hearts, artificial blood and other surgical instruments, and how African Americans tend not to benefit from this research for which their bodies have been used and abused, often without their knowledge or consent, to the same extent as do white Americans. This chapter focused on the lives of patients at the mercy of a bio core doctors and scientists like William Osler Abbott, Hans Zinser, George Gay, and Harry Bailey. The central theme of this chapter was that these corporations, scientists, and doctors alike sought out the use of black bodies for their experiments when, if successful, would not benefit black Americans or be affordable to them. Perhaps the most heart-wrenching aspect of this chapter is that many of the experiments were, of course, unsuccessful. 
patients at the mercy of a biocore never survived longer than two years. And other black people used by William Osler Abbott, Hans Ginzer, George Gay, and Harry Bailey rarely, if ever, received informed consent. These African Americans were also thought of as animals and were coerced by dreams of profit, life, and sleep to engage in dangerous and fatal experiments. I know Dick Cheney lived for a long time without a damn heart or a pulse or anything else till he got a real one. So, <laughs> you know, you know, he he lived almost a, uh, two years without one. I mean, he literally didn't have a heart. You know, mm. but um, <laughs> they check, they picked a the black person because he's expendable. Right. You know, yeah. When they, when they really when they really want to see how brave somebody is. You know, and everything they want to really make a, a media piece out of it, then you say, "Oh, this Caucasian person lived five years after the heart. Isn't he brave doing that?" But they ain't count the black bodies that, that got there. You know? Yeah, <laughs> and, and that's really interesting because I had never heard of the heart trans. You know, this company or this man. I only remember Barney Clark. You know, the white guy got yeah. that one artificial heart in the eighties. Exactly. 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 Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. No. I, wonder, I wonder what kind of heart did Dick Cheney have? <laughs> it was definitely artificial. <laughs> <laughs> well, you remember, you remember when he was oh, waiting on his heart. <laughs> did, did you remember oh, the heart that he had? Yeah. yeah you, remember, remember him. You, you remember the heart that he had? You know, he had an artificial heart that, yeah. and he actually literally had no pulse, and he lived like. Uh, waiting on his uh, his heart transplant, it was over a year. Yeah. Um, yeah. He was doing just fine. Unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> okay.